Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be having a look at the new CT305 Burb side, which is, as you can see, a console-friendly version that is also usable on PC, of course, of a classic square body Suburban. Now, on PC, you can get a Emblems add-on pack to go with this vehicle and some of Red's other vehicles, but of course, the Emblem pack isn't on console because it is literally branding. Now, also, regular viewers will know that, obviously, there's normally a face cam up in the corner. We've got some technical stuff going on right now in terms of the face cam, so please do excuse that while we do this and maybe a couple more videos without the face cam being there, but rest assured the face cam will return soon. Now, what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you guys through and around this vehicle. We're going to customize it, and then we're going to take it on a trail ride and see what it is like to drive. Now, let's also get a quick look at the interior. Check out the dash, classic style steering wheel, fully modeled out interior, by the way. You can see, oh, wow, dude, you can see the shift lever for the transfer case. You can see the center console, even down to the seat belts in the rear row. And also, whoa, you've got full texturing on the ceiling and everything. This thing is very, very, very well put together on the inside. And if you guys are people that like to play an interior view, oh, you're going to love this thing. But let's fire it up. It's definitely got that classic sound to it. Let me rev it a couple more times. All right, let's see what this thing drives like in stock form. It's actually not slow in stock form. We'll do a little quick lap around the garage. Then we'll take it inside and we'll throw the lift kit on it. We'll throw, well, it's a little bit more than a lift kit. You guys will see what I mean in a minute. But like, even in standard form, it's not slow. So let's go on inside, and then now we'll go straight into the customization features. Now, we're going to start off with a small block 350, but that can be, of course, increased to a big block 454 that we're definitely going to use. Now, gearbox-wise, you've got default, off-road, 10-speed, and manual buzz-tuned. Now, we're going to do the off-road box, but the 10-speed would definitely be a good option if you were trying to both have off-road gear ranges and also really be able to send it and get out of the way of anything that is approaching in a straight line. So, suspension-wise, you've got the default one, and then you've got the lift kit, which also disables damage, which we're definitely going to go with. Now, tires-wise, you're going to start off with a set of 33s, but those can, of course, be increased to 38s, and the tire range basically goes all the way across both of those sizes, and probably more. Actually, no, it actually repeats in the mud tire category in 33 and 38. I actually like a lot of these tires. Now, granted, we've seen a lot of these tires before, but for this one, they've actually, they actually look like they've been kind of refreshed a little bit and revamped to look even better on this Suburban. Now, of course, you've got your studded tires if you're in a campaign map with snow and ice, but on this build, I think we might go with a... Either, the, uh, either a set of stickies or maybe a, ooh, the XDLs. Oh, I'm very, very, very back and forth on that. I think we're going to go, I think we're going to go with the, uh, the stickies. I think they look really, really good on this thing. And they just really amp up the overall beefiness of the rig tenfold. So let's go with the Autonomous Scout Extended Winch, which is what this thing comes with by default. And then snorkel-wise, we've got a tall mushroom snorkel, but I don't think we're going to need it where we're going on this map. Now, you could do a ladder on the rear, which I, I think we'll do. Basic steps, tube rock sliders, custom rock sliders, and let's see, custom rear rock sliders. We'll do the custom rock sliders on the sides and the rear. Trailer hitch, if you want to pull a scout trailer, you totally can. We won't be in this test, but you totally can do that if you want to. Now, let's go all the way down to trunk repair supplies. We'll throw those in the back. And then let's see, you can also do a small roof rack if you are of rank 5 or higher, which we could do that with the dev tools, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Now, let's see, rear bumper stock, that's going to just chill like that. Got a nice light bar up top, or you could do the roof pods. That actually looks really neat. Um, roof rack in here can, whoa, all right, full roof rack, roof rack gear. Let's see, parking lights. I really like the way these look with the parking lights, so we'll go with those. And then, let's see, beacons and fogs. Not going to use that, but you can also even do the flasher bar if you want to. Now, rock lights, you have a lot of different options. I'm going to go with the white rock lights. And then, front bumper-wise, we got a stock, off-road, off-road tube bumper, brush guard, I actually really like this off-road bumper. It kind of reminds me of a Forest Ranger truck, so we'll do that. And then miscellaneous-wise, you've got a CB antenna with a normal base. Let's see, regular antenna, hood pods. I like the hood pods, actually. The hood pods look good. And let's see, 
trailer block dummy out on the blocks trailers unless hitch is installed we'll use that for now uh trim where would the trim go oh okay just down the sides yeah we'll do that and then windows you can actually uninstall the windows if you want to have the windows down which we'll definitely do and then let's see round beacon oh my god i love it so you can actually do like a round you know classic style beacon up top that's really neat now wheels wise you've got a lot of different options now actually this is super interesting so you have four different wheel options but three out of four you can actually pick whether or not you want them to have a beadlock ring which is a super neat option i actually really like wheel number two with the beadlock ring now as far as the color of the rig goes i mean dude the sky's the limit you can go pretty much any kind of color setup or color combination you want on this truck even with the two tones which i really like i actually really dig the red and white the red and white looks awesome very nice like classic style um, you can even go hey you know you can even go full like pink if you really want to let's see i think i'm gonna go with the red and white combo and we'll throw beans on the dash for some good luck and then now let's take this thing out and see what it's like to drive when we really put it through its paces on our good trail let's fire it up it sounds really really good too all right, let's see how fast it is now. Well, it's got a ton of torque with that 454, but the off-road gearbox kind of limits the speed a little bit, which is entirely understandable because that's kind of what you want it to do. You know what I mean? That you don't want this thing to be an absolute, you know, shredder when you're going down a trail. So if you like having the extra torque, but you want the speed to be limited a little bit, or if you're looking for maybe a more vanilla style speed, like a vanilla style gameplay speed, definitely go with the four speed off-road box because in automatic mode, it's a really nice, like, it's, it's a really nice balance of speed and torque, I think. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this, uh, this trail that's straight in front of us right now. And then, once we get a little bit further up that trail, we'll start transitioning into some slightly more gnarly obstacles. Let's make our way on up. Yeah, even in automatic mode, the power delivery is very smooth. And if you see, as we're going through these rocks kind of slow, the flex is really natural. It's got a really nice, natural way th that the suspension likes to behave on the trail. I like that. I like it a lot. And then, of course, if you want to use that 454's torque, you can just kick it back down a gear, hammer the throttle, and you're gone. Let's get a little bit further on up this trail. Let's see if it'll jump that just a little bit. It doesn't quite jump it, but it does bump the front axle up and over. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some people out there in the chat, or uh, not even in the chat, wow, in the comments. Is this a stream? No, this is a video, so comments. Now, as we make our way on up the hill, I'm sure there's going to be some people in the comments that are going to say, you're driving it too fast and you're lumbering it around and it's like unrealistic the way you're driving it i just want to see what this thing looks like when we really cycle through the suspension we're going to start driving a little bit slower once we get into some more technical obstacles a little bit further down the trail but oh dude i can't help but stop here every time i come to this map i have been driving this map literally ever since the game released well ever since the map released in this game which was really early on and that view literally never ceases to amaze me i'm gonna put it in low my oh god well, I have nothing to blame that uh, nothing to blame that on but myself. That was just a terrible line. I mean, and I was in low minus. It wasn't like I was going too fast. Yeah, the only thing I have to blame that on is literally me taking an awful line. So let's get this thing turned around and or rather just lined up with the trail as a whole and continue on our way. Now, I think that for the realism-focused trail riding player base in SnowRunner, especially those of you that are on console, this is going to be an incredible truck and a truck that is going to stick with you guys for a long time. But even if you're on PC, don't, you know, don't skim right over this truck. Get this truck and then get the emblem pack to go with it because you're going to have such a great time with it. I mean, if you like full-size rigs that can just absolutely eat up a trail just as well if not better than some of the smaller rigs like jeeps this thing is exactly what you're going to be looking for didn't look where i was going and we know what happened to me earlier when i did that so i'm trying to avoid any scenario that involves not looking where i'm going now let's see if we put it back in auto how will it handle itself up these steeper hills in auto without me touching the clutch button seemingly pretty well so far all i'm doing is throttle control i'm just easing back off of the gas whenever i need a little bit less wheel speed now this is where we're gonna start putting it through some slightly more gnarly stuff so i'll put it in low and we'll ease it up into these rocks now these rocks are a little bit more iffy because you're not actually supposed to go this way we're gonna have to ninja winch on that one thank you 
Now, can I find some traction here? Just a little bit of traction would be really nice. Yeah, you definitely have to watch the center of gravity, because as you can see, if you're not careful, you will flip it over. But again, this definitely gravitates to that very realistic style of trail riding, where you do have to worry about your center of gravity. You have to, like, think about it. You have to be like, hey, am I actually going to be able to make this line, or am I going to flop over the second I try to do it? Because that is honestly really realistic, and there are a lot of trails that will flop your rig in real life if you're not paying attention to stuff like that. So I don't know if we're going to actually be able to make it down this knot, we might end up on our lid, but let's take it nice and easy and see what we can do. I say nice and easy as I'm almost sheer vertical, but it's fine. I think we'll be okay. Yep, I think we'll be okay. Oh, no, oh well, we're fine. After a slight ninja winch grab and a little bit of an adjustment, we're A-OK. -okay. But let's ease it on down the trail just a little bit further. And actually, coming up on this stretch of trail, there's a really nice hill climb that will test the realistic hill climbing ability of this thing and not even just the real like the realistic hill climbing ability but the realistic rock crawling ability as well so putting it back in automatic let's see if we can make our way up through this rock field actually let's see what high range is like in the off-road box okay so it's about the speed of low plus in most other uh most other trucks which is actually what you want because think about it you've got low minus low, low plus, and then high is essentially just a slightly faster low plus, which is perfect for bumping an obstacle that you might not have the momentum to climb over. So let's go back into low now, put it in low plus, and oh my god, holy crap. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can use that torque to our advantage. Not bad so far. Trying to look around for traction as we, go. oh my god, oh boy. All right, that's not going to be a good line, but this will be a slightly better line over to the left. Oh, no. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. If you don't plan your line right, you will flip it over, and that's very, very, very realistic. So if you're talking about, you know, realistic mods, this is up there. I mean, it really is up there with the best of them. I'm going to try this hill one more time because I think I can do it without flipping this thing over. It should be able to do it without flipping over at least. What if I go... For the, like, just literally the direct, like, head-on line. Let's see if we can do that. We might be able to. Oh, God. Yep, it wanted to go backwards. Man, this is tricky. Okay, so you actually have to think about this and make decisions like you would if you were climbing this hill in real life. I mean, if Red was going for realism with this rig, he nailed it. All right, we've got the back tire positioned where we need it. Now, there we go. So as long as you get the rig balanced the way it likes to be balanced and you rotate it around, you'll be fine. There we go. Let it slide back a little bit. Use the brakes. Oh, boy. Let it dig in. Find some traction on the front axle and work it back the other way. And boom, there is your hill climb. Okay, after doing that hill climb, I absolutely have to say that this is one of the most realistic trail rigs I've driven in a very long time. Absolutely no question about it. Top-notch performance in terms of realism. Now, if you like to blast through trails and just not worry about a single thing and just rip and just, like, hold the gas down all the time, this may not be the vehicle for that. But if you like that slower, more deliberate, more, like, thinking-focused style of trail riding, this is going to be right up there at the top of the, of the list. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.